Hi, this is Sean Swander of Swander Photography, and today we're going to be talking about how to blend harsh shadows. And these harsh shadows come from when you use direct flash on your camera, and it creates this straight edge shadow under the chin of the model. And I'm going to zoom in, and you're going to be able to see this shadow right here. See? So we're going to get rid of that. So the final result is going to look like this there okay so let's get to it first thing you're gonna do is grab the clone stamp tool and I'm using 4% opacity okay and if you want you can use a quick selection and select the part of the face that you don't want to affect so I'm gonna do that right now I'm gonna get her finger and chin and I'm gonna inverse the selection and this is just gonna help isolate the area that I'm using the clone stamp tool on. Okay, and so we're going to sample from a lighter part of her skin and we're just going to use this 4% opacity brush and go over the harsh lines that's created by the shadow. And there are two shadows here, one's from my side light, which I could actually leave that if I wanted, but uh, for the purpose of the tutorial I'm going to go ahead and show how we could do this on any harsh shadow. And you might lose some detail when you're doing this effect, so there are ways to bring that detail back by highlighting your edges on another layer with um, an, in, an, a high pass filter. And I've actually shown how to do that high pass filter on the skin softening tutorial, because that is actually the effect that leaves um, some of the texture in the skin in. So. You can check out that tutorial um, if you want. If not, uh, I might make another tutorial on how to bring the details back. But right here, there aren't really any lines on the neck that I'm really wanting to keep in here. I don't really see any major shadows. Um, but when we're doing this, we can keep it in mind. And you can actually avoid some of the texture or leave it in by... This is a very light brush, and my Wacom tablet even allows me to... I'm using even less than 4% when I'm painting here. And so if you're using a mouse, you're going to have to use like 2% or maybe even less, maybe even 1%. So this effect will take forever if you don't have a tablet. So this is one of those things that that uh, I really highly recommend using a Wacom tablet for. Because even, even with the tablet, this is going to run me maybe 5 minutes. So. And, I mean, most of the effect, if you've already got the gist of the idea here, there's really no reason for you to continue watching the video. But, uh, so if you want to save some time, but you can take this up as close to the chin as you want. I, I don't necessarily think you should push it into the chin all the way. Like, no matter what, some the flash is going to leave some shadow. So you can push it back and you can lighten the shadow up on the chin. So I will come all the way to it, and it'll lighten up the shadow a little bit. And so we're only using 4% of the color every time we make a brush stroke. So you can see the, the little green circle that the uh, screen capture added. That's every single one of those is a click. So it's, you know, about 3% every time I'm hitting this with the pressure I'm using on the tablet. So this would take forever with a mouse. And you can see it's re it's really taking away that shadow, and um, I'm actually creating a little more dimension here by adding some lighter skin tones in the center, and I'm going to blend those in a little better. But this this effect might take a little practice to to get down really well, and it helps to zoom out and look at the effect. And I'm actually going to leave this shadow on the side of her neck there because uh, it it creates some dimension to her neck. And I actually want that there. Okay, and you can actually see the before and after on the top. That's why I didn't do this on a new layer. But you could do this on another layer, and then you could use the opacity slider to basically fade the shadow. So if you didn't want the full effect, you could fade the shadow out with the opacity slider. All right. I'm Sean Swander. Thanks for watching. That was how to blend harsh shadows on a portrait. 
and don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe.